When we say we are saved, the question is, what are we saved from? Being a Christian makes us wonder, well, since we're saved, what exactly are we saved from? What are the people in the Old Testament? What are they saved from? The people in the New Testament, what are they saved from? And then us, what are we saved from? Why are we saved? What is actually happening here? Well, there are three things that we need to consider that we are saved from. Obviously, if we could sum up in one word, it would be sin. How so, Court? Well, we are first and foremost saved from the power of sin. The Bible says this, that therefore do not let sin reign in your mortal bodies that you may obey its lust. And do not go on presenting the members of your body to sin as instruments of unrighteousness, but present yourselves to God as those alive from the dead and your members and your members as instruments of righteousness. Here it is. Verse 14 that Paul says in chapter 6 of Romans, For sin shall not be master over you, for you are not under law, but under grace. In other words, we don't have to be subject to sin. We don't have to let sin rule in our bodies. We don't have to let it have any sort of dominion. Because as a believer, you have what? The Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit gives you the power to defeat. As a matter of fact, the Bible tells us, and this is a daily prayer, in when the Lord is asked, how should we pray? Notice what he says, and deliver us from the evil one. And so now, is that delivering us from evil? No. We'll deal with that in just a little bit. But we we should pray daily not to have us to lose, not to have our efforts thwarted, not to have our cause hindered by sin, or in this case, by the devil. So we don't have to sin. We will sin. That's just a that's just a fact. The Bible says that we will sin. However, we don't have to let it have dominion over us. As a matter of fact, truth be told, any sin that we're likely going to commit, we don't have to actually commit that sin. There's nowhere in the Bible that says that we have to sin. We will, but we don't have to. The good news is, though, that we have been delivered from the power of it. In other words, it does not dominate us anymore. It does not rule over us anymore. We can be victorious. Now, it may, it may be a daily step, but that's fine. A daily step it is. We shall daily have dominion over our own bodies instead of sin having dominion over us. So, in other words, that lustful eye or that lying tongue or that envious spirit or any of those things like that, uh, the, the wrath or rage or anger that we might have, we don't have to let that be who we're known by. We don't have to let sin be what's controlling us. In other words, we can draw close to him and let the spirit fill us and then we can fulfill the desires of um, God and walk in the spirit rather than fulfilling the lust of the flesh. Now, the second thing that we're delivered from is just as importantly, as a matter of fact, even more importantly, is the penalty of sin. Because we are saved, what are we saved from? Well, we're saved from hell. The Bible tells us, as a matter of fact, Jesus tells us as he's speaking to, to Lazarus' sister, he says to her, Jesus says, I am the resurrection and the life. He who believes in me will live even if he dies. He will live even if he dies. What's his point? Well, verse 26, and everyone who lives and believes in me will never die. Do you believe this? And the, the key point that he asks is, do you believe this? Well, what does he mean by we shall never die? He doesn't mean physically. Obviously, there's going to come, come a point in time if he doesn't tarry in terms of, if he doesn't take long in coming back, there's going to come a point in time where we're going to have a funeral. There's going to come a point in time where someone's going to celebrate our life because we've died on this earth. But that's not what he's speaking of. He's speaking of the penalty of death. In other words, being forever separated from him, going to hell. The Old Testament saints know this. New Testament saints know this as well. We should know this, that we don't ever have to worry about being someone in hell. That's not our destiny. We have been saved from that. So those are the two things that we can say that we're saved from. We are saved from the power of sin. We are saved also from the penalty of sin, which is hell. But then also at some point in time, now this hasn't happened yet, but we will be saved from the presence of sin. The Bible tells us this in 1 Corinthians 15, 53, for this perishable must put on the imperishable and this mortal must put on immortality. But when this perishable will, will have put on the imperishable and this mortal will have put on immortality, then will come about the saying that is written, death is swallowed up in victory. O death, verse 53, verse, verse 55, O death, where is your victory? O death, where is your sting? The sting of death is sin and the power of sin is the law. 
but thanks be to God who gives us victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. There's going to come a point in time when we will not be surrounded by sin. The power is gone, the penalty is gone, and the presence of sin is gone. There's going to come a point in time where we will no longer have to worry about this fleshly body that causes, brings about sin. There won't be this warring in between our members. We will be in the presence of the Lord forever in a sinless state with glorified bodies, I might add. And so those are the three things that we are saved from. We are saved from the power of sin. We are saved from the penalty of sin. And then ultimately, one day we will be saved from the presence of sin, all because he got on the cross and died for us. Amen.